here in the sanctuary and good morning to all of you here on Zoom. What a pleasure to see everyone, but what a specific and particular pleasure to see you, Dixon, here joining us from Florida, and Lenore too. Welcome, so good, so good to see you. Yay! <laughs> yeah, you got a yay from the crowd here. <laughs> it means you have Wi-Fi in the condo, is that right? <laughs> Oh, friends, this has been a remarkable week. It's a remarkable thing to be a downtown church, a church a block and a half from a state capitol on the week that the budget is being finalized. It has been a week of processions, actually. Um, up and down the streets as people have come to the State House to lobby, rally, and protest all week long. We were particularly connected to uh, one of those, uh, those movements this week, and that was the movement to raise the wage for home health care workers. Uh, two of our own members uh, work as home health aides. In fact, even as we gather here this morning, our own Daniel Soa is working as a home health aide, Eva Manison as well. They made a video uh, that uh, spoke about their experience as uh, low wage essential workers during a pandemic, making $12.60 an hour. There was a massive movement over the last month uh, Eva and Daniel were part of it, but so were many of the consumers of home health, the people who need home health aids. And we also were a place of respite and a place of gathering for some of those folks. Our building, which is now fully handicap accessible downstairs with a handicap accessible bathroom, became uh, the home for several groups of people in wheelchairs uh, who were lobbying at the State House all week long. And they gathered here and processed down to the Capitol and came back for lunch and to regroup and went down again all week last week, all week this week. I don't know if you followed that news, but even at one point this week on Tuesday evening, 24 people in wheelchairs and their home health aides arrested as an act of civil disobedience to uh, make sure that everybody understood what they were fighting for and what their needs were. I was so impressed with the bravery of all of the people involved. Their um, efforts were semi-successful, shall we say, while they were um, lobbying for a large pay increase, they did receive a $3 an hour pay increase bringing their wage up uh, in New York City, at least, to $18.50 an hour. That's a tough thing to celebrate, isn't it? That now people who provide essential work will make $8, $18.50 an hour living in New York City, less outstate up in this area. But friends, I was impressed with the effort to be seen that people who so often are homebound, people who we so often hide, pushed their way forward and every single day showed up in that building, up and down the hallways and demanded to be seen. Demanded to be seen and recognized. It's so easy to look away. But when we see, things change. When we see things change, and it is still so hard not to look away, what a week. As Russian troops withdrew from Kyiv, we saw, we saw even more vividly the cost of war. And we saw even more vividly that war is not just an act of cruelty by one individual, directs that war or decides where it goes and what happens, it is an act of cruelty of many, many people who perpetrate that war. A missile hitting a packed train station 
60 people killed trying to evacuate, many of them children. It's hard not to look away. How do you live in a world where such things happen? How do we respond? How do our lives reflect what we have seen and what we know? In response to that question, our tradition offers us not neat and tidy lessons, but a story. A story that we hear throughout the Christian year, the story of Jesus, the story we celebrate, the story that's filled with so many lessons and parables and stories of colorful interactions with people, but it comes down to the story that we'll hear today. A story that begins with celebration with a procession and ends with tragedy and loss and grief. It's hard not to look away, but this story central to our faith, central to this community, demands that we hear and attend to these things. Not to distill some kind of little life lesson, but instead to be formed by the witness to be formed as people who can attend to even these hard things and let them inform our life and shape us as people. Because as central as the practice of attending is for us, so it is a central promise of God's that all of what we hear in the story we are about to hear today it's not something that God has turned away from or ignored. It's not something that God has turned God's back on, but instead God attends, God is present. God is throughout this story. So let us do the same. Let us listen and be formed by what we hear. We begin by greeting one another as people who have come into this room to hear and attend, let us see who we are with and greet them with the gift that God gives to each of us. May the peace of God be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Be with you. Peace, peace be with you all. Welcome, Dixon. Hey, Mary. Eleanor. Great to see you. Oh, thank you. It's so thank great you, to be with you all. Be with you. Hi, Ned and Patricia. Hey, Ned. Hello. Hello. Oh. And we'll continue in worship with this wonderful video of the last of our series of psalms offered by the children in our church school. Wait, what this one from Anam and Aram, who will be reading the psalm. They do include the responsive portion of the psalm that for those of you who are here in the sanctuary and you have a printed bulletin, you'll be able to follow along. For those of you on Zoom, listen and enjoy. <laughs> Please let us listen to the word of God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God can pass love and your bless. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The I thank you that you have entered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. 
it is marvelous in our eyes. God says, Let us forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God says, Love and Friends, as you process in this morning, you process past the offering plates, which are at the back uh, of our uh, aisle here. I um, welcome your offering and support of this, the work of this church and all who we serve. Um, as I said, this was a week where I was really proud of Westminster to be a host, not just to worship on a Sunday morning like this, but to be a host throughout the week uh, to, those who, to those who need respite and support and a place to rally. We'll continue with our choir. The story we're about to hear holds together celebration and sorrow. So does prayer, right? What are you celebrating today? I want to ask that question to those of you who are here on Zoom as well. And let's gather our celebrations together. You can, on Zoom, you can go ahead and uh, write your celebrations in our chat. And let me just ask those of you who are here in person to let me know. What are you celebrating? What's the good news this week? Being here, welcome back. Welcome to Connie and to uh, several of you who haven't been here for a little while. Welcome, Shernette. And welcome to all of you who are here on Zoom who haven't been around for a little while, including the aforementioned Southward. What else? What are we celebrating? Yeah. Oh, yeah. John's celebrating his dad's 94th birthday. 
other celebrations this week. Yeah, Diane. Who did Matthew? Oh, how awesome. Your son got accepted to law school with a full ride? That merits another procession. <laughs> Holy smokes, how wonderful. Oh, great what news. We didn't oh, hear. Oh, sorry. Uh, Matthew Scaptura got accepted to law school, and he got he, two, accepted to two law schools, one of which gave him a full ride. Yeah. Right. Can we sing Hosanna over again? Is that, would that be appropriate? I'm sorry if you guys can't hear me. I'll, I'll move this up a little bit. Okay, what else? Oh, it's so good to celebrate together. Is anybody going to celebrate a historic event on the Supreme Court this week? Were we going to mention that? Or, oh, that, that? That seems like something to celebrate. First African-American woman, Supreme Court Justice. What else? What are we celebrating? Yeah, Urban. Oh, terrific. And, and what's his name, Irvin? Irvin's celebrating a family reconnection, a reconnection with Irvin's family. We celebrate that with you. Anything else? Yeah, Felicia. Holy smokes! <laughs> and you just were maybe not going to mention that, but thought you'd bring it up. Wow. Okay, so for those of you who didn't hear, no, 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 who's uh, Felicia's daughter, who's about to uh, graduate from Syracuse with uh, her bachelor's in medicinal chemistry, got accepted to NYU, one of 10 applicants who received funding for her program for a PhD. Is that correct? Oh, a master's program. Yeah. Oh, bravo. Oh, we celebrate that. Wow. Did anybody else get accepted to this? <laughs> Rest of us slackers just trying to get through the week here. My goodness. Yeah, Sheila, you got a celebration? What? She has a oh, what coming up? A birthday. You have a birthday coming up. Oh, we will not forget that, Sheila. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, so good to be in a place that can hold all of that good news. And we'll celebrate it in prayer, but let's lift up as well those things that are the hard things, the sorrows and the losses this week, because we can hold all of those things too for each other. What concerns would you like to have us hold in prayer this morning? Yeah, Felicia. Okay. Wow. For those of us who are a little medically squeamish, that was a vivid description 
but we are going to definitely hold uh, Shelly Seeley in prayer, a member of this congregation who uh, is really struggling with uh, post-operative uh, stomach cancer. Yeah. Shanette, did you have the, yeah. We pray for those in Haiti. Yeah, thank you. Nancy. Oh, goodness. We pray for Ben and Carla going through a difficult time and for Waylon. We'll have a, a procedure this week. Yeah. Yeah. Connie. For guidance, learning how to talk with your husband, Frank. So. Yeah. Paul? For our Congress and executive branch that they figure a way to work with each other rather than fight with each other so that our country can live better and the people who live in our country can move forward rather than stall because there's so much infighting. Yeah. Paul offers a prayer for, for our government, for our federal government, praying that all parties will find a way to work together. Other prayers this morning? We have some uh, from Zoom here. Uh, pray for the girls in Afghanistan. Ned Trudeau offers. Dixon offers celebrating continued improved health. Kathy Walters offers that her dad ha is having uh, celebrating his 76th birthday this weekend. Anything else we need to hold today? Well, let's be together in prayer and we'll start with just a few moments of silence, letting all of those concerns and celebrations <laughs> rest in our hearts and in this room. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear us as we lift up the celebrations of our lives, the excitement of new possibilities, barriers broken, new worlds discovered. God, thank you for being with us in all of the joys of our lives. And God, thank you for being with us in the sorrows as well. We lift up the concerns we've mentioned and all of those that now bubble up in our hearts in the quiet of these moments. We give you thanks for your presence in the journey of our lives. All of the twists and turns. And we pray that you would open our hearts to your presence, to your guidance, that you would help us to see, to hear, to understand how to take the next step forward, how to take the next step closer to you. Keep our eyes open, Lord. And hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now uh, Maxine will continue uh, and lead us in uh, an extended prayer of confession. Maxine is joining us from the Caribbean, where she's in medical school. How great that we come together in this way. Maxine, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, forgive us the many ways we are swept up by our passions and the passions of others. We forget who we are and whose we are. We overlook how quickly we move from shouts of Hosanna to shouts of crucify him. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us our addictions to power and to might. Our controlling actions limit the freedom of others and build walls, not bridges. We believe ourselves invincible and prove it at the expense of others. We give up those who we love to fulfill our cravings for more. Lord, forgive us for remaining anonymous when we know others are being abused. Forgive us when we fail to step out in defense of the poor, the weak, and the innocent. And when we fail to pray for the rich, the powerful, and the misguided, forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us when we deny your law when we deny your very existence, when we claim by our words or with our actions that we don't know you. Our rational minds wrestle with our faithful hearts and we lose touch with our deep failure in knowing of you. Lord, have mercy. God, collectively we turn our back on you in the process, denying your kingdom. We move with the crowd, but there are also sins that are ours alone. In deep silence, we lift these to you and we seek to turn toward you, repentant and lost, but with confidence in your love and your grace. Listen so that you may live the steadfast love of the Lord never fails. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. In the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, whose words silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. Luke 22, 14 through 20. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he had reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial.
While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, the officers of the temple police and the elder who had come for him, have you come out with the swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of that darkness. A reading from Luke 22, verses 54 to 62. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about, a later, later, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the, co the, cro the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who had, were holding Jesus began to mock him and to beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the scribes gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated at, at the right hand of the power of God. And they all asked him, are you then the son of God? He, he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him saying, we found this man perverting our nation forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. Oh, my God, we 
Luke 23, verse 13 to 25. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was parading the people, and here I've examined him, and in your presence, I've found this man. I've not found this man guilty of charges against him. Neither has Herod, so he sent him back to us. Indeed, he's done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. They all shouted together, away with his fellow, release Barabbas to us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city for a murder. Pilate wanting to release Jesus addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. The third man said to them, a third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no grounds for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgent demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified and in their voices, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict and their demands should be granted. He released the men they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they wished. Luke 23, verses 26 to 31. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus said to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Luke 23, verse 32 through 43. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then yeah, Jesus said, wait. Father, forgive them, uh -oh, for they do not know what they are doing. Um, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, 
If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I will do it. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all of those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. This is not the end of the story. It's not 
not even the end of the week. It's really the beginning of the week. I hope that you will join us again on Thursday evening uh, for a Maundy Thursday service. We'll begin with a communion service downstairs at 6.30 around tables. And then we'll come up here and at 7.30 we'll have a tenebrae service, which is a service of shadows where we read the story and sing some of the songs of our tradition that go with that story and blow out candles along the way and end in darkness. But a dramatic service. I hope you'll come with us. That, that service will not be on Zoom. That service uh, with low light like that, there's no way for us to broadcast it. So please come and share it with us in person. And then on Friday, this room will be open for prayer and reflection aided by some prayer stations from four to eight. Four of the downtown focus churches are open up, have opened up and have different uh, things happening in their sanctuaries between four and eight on a drop in basis. Um, I hope you'll be able to come to that. There's sign up sheets for both things. For the Thursday night dinner, we do need you to register, and I appreciate you to do that online or in person. Now you can sign your name. And on Friday, we're looking for hosts, which is just someone to be here in the sanctuary to welcome people. No further uh, work required than to be here and to welcome. Please sign up uh, on the sheet out there if you can do that. And then there's something really great happening in this room a week from today. You know what that is? <laughs> Easter. My first in-person Easter here with Westminster. All the bells and whistles, or at least a few of them. <laughs> we'll have a, a trumpeter and we'll have flowers and we have a few hey, surprises. Thinking about As you might Mary. Imagine. Uh, so and please uh, come and let's celebrate the amazing news wait. at the end of that yeah. story, which is also the beginning of our story. Friends, this is the promise, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit is with us now and will be with us forevermore. Even death cannot keep that news from becoming true for our lives and for this world. So go in peace, serve the Lord, and let's say together, thanks, thanks be to God. Tom Hanks called Cat.